Hey YouTubers, this is Jacques Gaines from Jacques Gaines Photography and I decided to do a change of scenery but today I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of the Fujifilm X100F. Guys, there's some people ask me, you were talking about the Canon EOS 80D and all of a sudden you just gave up on that camera? Well, I haven't guys. I love my 80D and I'll never get rid of this camera for a lot of reasons and I am doing a couple of reviews on that camera. I'm doing a video called the Canon EOS 80D and how you must have it in your collection. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Also, before I start, remember to check out my five reasons why I bought the Fujifilm X100 F. Uh, the links will be down below and check that out as well. So here we go and let's get into the video. Okay, now before I start this assessment guys, I have to mention who I am and what I do so you can either take what my opinion is or just throw it away. I'm a photographer who's worked on his skills for the past two years and I'm getting better and better, but I am not like a pro that's been working in photography for 20 years, uh, but I still, based on my workflow, give you my pros and cons. If you wanna stick around and find out how I felt about it so far, having it for about six weeks now and shooting with it a bit, here is what I have to say. I'm not the type of guy who likes to burn in my colors. I like to work in RAW and I like to do post-processing afterward. However, a lot of the actual film looks that they do have in this camera are 100% great. If you want to get that Fuji look or that film look, you will get it with this camera. It's not just this half-ass type of look. It actually does a great job at reproducing some of the Fuji film looks that were in the past when there was film. So I just wanted to mention that. I personally just use Provia and I'm really happy with it, but uh, there are others in there. There's some monochrome looks and there's some great stuff and I love that. That is Pro 1. Pro 2, dynamic range is quite astonishing. When I work in Lightroom with this thing, when I work in Bridge, and I'm actually processing my RAWs, I do have tons of leeway. You do not have to worry about that with this camera. You're using the fantastic, fantastic processor that's in the X-T2 right now. It's the latest and greatest. You will not be disappointed. Now here is a benefit I'd like to mention I think is really important is the dial system. Now the dial system, why is it so amazing? The reason is the following, is that when you wanna go and you go out shooting in the streets doing street photography or any sort of candid photography because this camera is small, uh, what's really cool about this camera is that when you decide what you wanna make automatic, you basically just go to the dial that represents that automaticity. And then after that, you take that dial, put it on automatic, and part of your things are automatic. Now, anyone who's worked with Nikon or Canon, you have to go into AV, TV, PCA modes. They're all different modes that actually give you the equivalent of what I'm talking about. But let's say I wanna go into aperture priority, which is the fact that I want to be choosing my aperture, but I want everything else to set itself. Uh, what happens is, in that case, what you want to do is you want to put shutter speed on auto, and then after that, you can play with your aperture. Uh, you don't have to think of that anymore. You don't have to think of which mode is equivalent or anything like that. You just go and take whatever you want to be in automatic and put it in automatic. So I thought that is really cool and I really like that about the X100F. I cannot str overstress how much I love the dial system. Another pro is the fact that focus is on point. It's fast, it's quick. Uh, the joystick is placed at a great spot. The fact that it has a joystick on such a small camera and you can actually go pick your autofocus points. I saw tons of people talking about the joystick on the X100F and the X-T2 and uh, on a lot of the Nikon models and I was wondering why they were going on. What's the biggie, what's the biggie? Well, I find, found out quickly when I finally got the X-T2 and the X100F. It's kind of fun to have a small, small camera like this with a joystick on it. 
Now here's another pro. One of the great advantages of any mirrorless camera is the fact that you're looking at a live preview of what's going on. Uh, in the case of the X100F, you're talking about a hybrid viewfinder, so you can change from live to actual viewfinder look. But when I'm in live view, uh, I really adore the way Fujifilm approaches focus focus peaking. They have the fantastic focus peaking that they also have on the X-T2. It is just absolutely astonishing and I wanted to mention that. So the focus peaking on the X100F is fantastic. Another great advantage is the menu system is one, amazing, really nice, really intuitive and smart and it's also lends itself to whatever is happening on your other Fuji equipment. So let's say you have an X-T2 or you have an X-Pro2, you will see basically the same sort of logistics and it's kind of fun to be dealing with that uh, and it's really kind of cool. So when you move from one camera to the next, it's quick and you can go straight to that point. So the Fuji X100F also offers 60p and I think in a small compact camera whenever you're uh, using a, a camera it is kind of fun to have 60p because you can interpolate it to give you slow motion it is really nice so I thought that was a bonus as a videographer I love that fact I do not use this camera a lot for video but I thought it might be a nice thing to mention so all in all it's just a great camera it's pocketable and it's small and it's really cool um, it's just one of the best street cameras out there and I wanted to mention that. But with every good thing, there can be some bad and here's some of the bad. I was just talking about the menu system and how it is fantastic, it's great and it's logical. However, it is different from any other camera equipment you have. It is like really different. I am a Canon guy and I was surprised to what extent it was a change for me to be working in the Fuji system. Now, that being said, as I said before, the logistics of the menu system is really nice on the Fuji, and it also makes sense on Canon, but they're really different. So it can be a con in the sense that if you're using some Canon equipment or any other equipment and you go to the Fuji uh, system, it might be a bit of a drag. So, but I mean, it's not no biggie. Here's another con, although it has the hybrid um, viewfinder system where you can actually look at live view and then actually look through the camera and look down and even have a projection of your settings on the camera, yes it's great, but I find myself not using that viewfinder system and using more the live view and every time I'm in the live view and I take my shot and I look at it after and I say, ah, shit it's not the what I wanted I start saying to myself well this is not why I bought the bought a mirrorless camera so I think it's a cool thing I probably will like it eventually if you guys use it in your workflow I'd like to hear some comments on how you use that viewfinder system but I find myself really really using the live view here's another con and this is a personal con people I first bought the X-T2 and I have the angle up flip screen. I really like that, especially when it involves candid photography. Right now I'm filming you on the G7X Mark II, which is also a super small camera and it is excellent. And one of the big advantages of that camera is the flip up screen. Now, in the case of the G7X Mark II, it becomes a very good vlog camera because it can flip all the way up. But the fact that it can flip at an angle a tiny bit, you can bring that down waist high and be even more candid is really nice. The X100F has a flat screen on the back. Fuji has been sticking to that. Uh, and uh, on a lot of their compact cameras, that's what they have. So. I would prefer to have a flip up screen so that I could br actually bring the camera waist high and look at the flip up screen because I have found myself going down at low angles and not being able to get uh, uh, a view of what I'm shooting. Now here's the deal with this camera, oh, okay, I'll show you. Now this camera right here is small. but. To say that this camera is pocketable 
it is just limit pocketable. It's just on the edge of not being pocketable. And it would have been nice if it were a tiny bit smaller. Again, I go back to the G7X Mark II, which is very small. Uh, now, why is this happening? You gotta realize there is an APS-C sensor in that camera, so it might be the fact that they need a bit of distance for the flange, because a lot of the other cameras, the, the, the uh, comp competing cameras out there that come from Sony, like the RX100 and everything, uh, all those cameras have a one inch sensor so they can they can permit themselves to have a smaller flange distance. Now the only exception to this rule is the RX1 by Sony which is a full frame camera with and is very very small but you pay for what you get. You're paying suggested retail of $4,299. That's a lot of money. So for the price I have to defend Fuji at the same time in the fact that I think for the price, it's still a small camera, but maybe the technology to pack that down and get it even smaller might have made the camera a bit too expensive. But that being said, I think it's small, but it is barely pocketable. It is pocketable, but just right on the edge. With the arrival of the XC3, you can get a small camera, roughly the same size as the X100F, interchangeable lenses, and most importantly to me, the thing that kind of bugs me a bit is the fact that you get a camera that has a touchscreen. I wouldn't have said this two years ago that I love touchscreens, but having a couple of cameras, especially having the 80D and the G7X Mark II, I have fallen in love with the touchscreen. My FZ, which is right there actually, the FZ 2500 also has a touchscreen. They're all impeccable touchscreens and I find myself using them more and more. I would have liked the X100F to have that touchscreen. It would have been nice. So that's it guys. I just wanted to mention those points and this is from a guy who's had this camera for six weeks. So I will be coming out with a review. I'm going to be talking about some of the settings I use when I go out and do some street. I'm loving this camera. I'm loving every minute of it. Some of the shots I get, I really adore. But before I leave, I got to ask you guys, what do you think? What do you think of the X100F? And what do you think of this new XE3 that just came out? I mean, it's offering a lot of stuff that the X100F cannot offer. Uh, now, at the same time, one thing that's great about fixed lens, like there's, there are advantages to having the X100F. For example, it is kind of cool that because you have a fixed lens, you can also have a leaf shutter and that brings in all the high speed sync possibilities you can possibly imagine. So there is those facts, but tell me what you think of the XE3 coming out and the X100F, is it gonna leave it in the dark? Uh, do you have an X100F? How do you use it in your workflow? Uh, and that's about it. So guys, thanks for watching. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. For my high quality stuff, check out Behance. If you like this video, click the thumbs up in the bottom. If you wanna keep in cahoots with what I do, subscribe. And don't forget everybody, keep on making something from nothing.